the outside. Um, so it would be real easy to lose track of someone. Like I said, it could be for a pretty innocuous reason. I mean, basically like a cord snapping and someone ha have to do a long swim to get in. You know, so uh, I could see how it would be easy to, to miss someone out there. And, um, you know, not having had anyone die yet, I think, uh, you know, probably not as heightened of a level of awareness, you know, as you would have now. You know, someone, you know, now I think they're keeping a lot heavier, you know, a lot, lot better tabs on people that are getting drilled and, you know, looking to see that they're going to pop up in a whitewater inside and, you know, that's where, that's where a jet ski would come in real handy to come in and, and basically swoop someone out before they get into the rocks. I cannot believe it, but Mark Fu passed away. I'm like, what? No way. I mean, Mark Fu was a guy that basically did everything. He surfed Toto Santos, he Toto surfed Waimea, he surfed the Outer Reefs, like, invincible. He was invincible. And he had just been killed by a wave at Mavericks. Like, just was devastating. And that, I remember that night too, like, as soon as that happened, that, that afternoon got kind of stormy and weird, and then all of a sudden, you know, it just shut down. The rainy rest of the season was done, it was done. So that week right there, started with the wipeout of Jay, ended with Mark Fu's death. Amazing week of surfing. You know, it unfortunately had to have the passing of Mark Fu, but it also showed how crazy and gnarly this wave was at Mavericks. So that's how he kind of lived. He's also a professional big wave rider. He surfed at YMA. He was a, a competitor in the Eddie Aikawa event, which is the elite big wave Quicksilver sponsors and it's in memory of Eddie Aikau so he was part of that so he was one of the guys who rode big waves and as he as being from Hawaii that's what he did and he was one of the guys that actually took big wave riding out of Hawaii he'd come to Toto Santos which is an island off of Mexico that has big waves as well and he'd come and he'd surf that all the time when the swells were up um, so it was just second nature for him to come and visit. It was a pretty inconsistent swell there was a, a set that came. Mark Fu and Ken Bradshaw were paddling for the same wave. Mark actually ha had the inroad. He was a little bit more towards the channel and he had the inroad. He got the wave. Um, when he stood up, the wave kind of lurched and it's, and when I was describing the way the wave works is it gets these big ruts in the wave. So sometimes it'll lurch and it'll back off and lurch again. And that's kind of what happened is it lurched a little bit. It wasn't a real like supersized set wave, but it like kind of backed off for a second and that's what allowed um, Mark to kind of get the inroad and then it lifted again and right when he stood up it lifted and so he kind of poked the nose of his board when he was dropping in it because the wave kind of lurched and it dug the nose of his board and he fell kind of face first and when he fell he kind of went mm. you know on his neck and everything and that could have kind of like knocked the air out of his chest you know the way it kind of was kind of an awkward kind of landing um, like I said, the wave wasn't real gigantic. The problem was is that that wave, when when he got he, he lurched, hit, got sucked over because every time you get you can't if you don't penetrate, you, you know sometimes you'll penetrate and you get through the back. But this one he he didn't penetrate, so he got sucked in the lip. And you see him, he kind of goes over the falls. And what happens in that wave is that his tail, his wave or his board breaks. He's only got a little piece of his tail left, and. The way the bottom is shaped out there, they have these kind of undertoes, and I you have these things called, you know, like it's an underwater, full undertow. So he got held down. He didn't have a board to really show him where up was because it only had this little te teeny piece of his tail left. So he was held down, and on the next wave, which was a much bigger wave, was Brock Little and um, Mike Parsons. Mike Parsons was deeper, Brock Little was was a little bit funny. They take off in the same wave, they're both too deep, and the wave breaks and just blows them up, and they both kind of get blown up. Um, Parsons, he eats it on that wave, and when he's underwater, he hits somebody. He knows that he hit somebody, and he, he guaranteed he hit Mark Fu. You felt him bumping under the wave? I felt him bump, I felt something come up under me at when, when I came up after the wipeout, and it was him, he was still, still under. He came up after the next wave, I'm pretty sure. And then we were tangled together just getting ping pong through the rocks. never know, you know, you never know exactly if you fall a little bit um, one way or another, if it's too far that way or too far the next, you know, it's just, you just never know, so. I, I don't surf Mavericks anymore because, um, you know, I've, I've moved on, I have a kid now, and, um, 
That was a really good time in my life, and I know how dangerous it, it, it is, you know, and you got to be totally at the top of your game out there, and I'm probably not at the top of my game since I'm 40. Um, and uh, no, I'm just, I'm just enjoying surfing now, like fun size waves. I surf big waves still, but I've definitely had my times at Mavericks where I've, I really thought that that was it, you know. Um, I, my leash got caught on the rocks and basically thinking, God, this a couple more waves and I'm gonna die. Just you gotta pay attention to everybody in the lineup and make sure that you account them um, one way or another, even if they've had like a pretty normal wipeout, which is what kind of foos look like. It didn't really look like a super nasty wipeout, but any wipeout of Mavericks can be a can be your last. The next monumental shift in surfing progression hit Mavericks with the speed and power of a two-stroke engine. Surfers wanted to ride the biggest waves at Mavericks, waves that were too big to paddle into and were going unridden. They harnessed the power of the jet ski and formed teams to tow each other into the biggest waves ever ridden. Tow surfing allowed them to go places on the wave that had never been ridden before, but the tow era was short-lived. Due to Mavericks being located in a marine sanctuary, tow surfing was outlawed. I look back on it and it was a special time. This historical session was one of the last of its kind. You will never see this type of surfing at Mavericks again. You know, toe surfing was something that we had borrowed from uh, the crew over in, in Maui. Um, Lair, Dave Kalama, the Strap crew, that, they all were doing it already. And we just took what they were doing and brought it to Mavericks. Fear either stops you in your tracks and you don't go forward or it motivates you to go to the next level. And that's pretty much what it did for me. I'm not really afraid of anything. Those days, the fun was just amazing, and you could go out there in the early mornings, but when the winds were blowing really offshore and you really couldn't get into the waves paddling, and they actually ride these waves with, this, with these shorter boards. I love the fact you can kind of come from behind it um, and backdoor it, like because you have all the speed that you carry um, with the rope, you just slingshot your way into the peak. Or set it up just like you would a wave at Stockton Avenue or something. This is little teeny waves that you can you just expand it into this, you know, 35 foot face. 
neatest things about toe surfing is the fact that you get to ride this equipment that you would never normally ride on big waves. You know, we were able to experiment and ride these boards that are super short. 